Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here. It is the Earth Master back on the home front here in California. I know it's been about, well, about 24 hours since I did an update. I was driving through the uh, Nevada desert, and there was not a whole lot of service out there. But uh, it's beautiful at night. Not a whole lot of people on the road, so we uh, went ahead and drove from uh, the Burlington, Colorado area back home to Northern California. So we are safe and sound on the home front. Live stream is back up and running. I just did a quick update on a couple different things to uh, make sure everything's on the fresh side in terms of the um, the live stream. All right, latest activity. What do we got out here, folks? Uh, looks like Kilauea Volcano is still kicking up. I didn't even get a chance to look at this last night uh, when I got home. Well, I got home super early this morning, and uh, I pretty much passed out for a little bit uh, after driving for... Ooh, well, it was about 18 hour drive. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, pretty crazy. Mini stops, lots of gas station stops and whatnot. And uh, either way, we made it home, Missy Mimi's and myself, from uh, a crazy week out there in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area. All right, latest activity here across the Kilauea volcano red earthquakes, or at least red in the uh, circle aspect of things, they're indicative of a recent earthquake activity. Uh, as you can see on the USGS map here, let me bring up the other one real quick, that uh, they're still seeing an earthquake swarm up here across the Kilauea volcano, stretching up um, almost now across the northern area, northwestern area of the Kilauea volcano. These are fairly, some of them are deep earthquakes. That That's pretty shallow, 2.3. Uh, there's a 4.5 underneath this area. 2.3 about 2.8 kilometers deep there so we're noticing a broader area of earthquake activity across the uh, Kilauea volcano along with the ongoing earthquake swarm here on this uh, upper east rift zone and across the uh, summit region just to the south now if we look at the last seven days of earthquake activity uh, you can see things have really kicked up here in the last couple days we're looking at about uh, 300 and 68 earthquakes that's just if they counted all of them i don't know if they counted all of them or not but uh we'll take you know we'll take their word for it for now i'm not in charge of this but that that's a lot of earthquake activity right 368 and notice the position of these earthquakes now aside from the pahala area that's very typical down there 35 kilometers deep underneath this area not not concerning the main area of inflation and uh, potential fissure activity is around this region here. I guess this would be the upper east rift zone. Some activity here across the southeast rift zone as well. So it's an ongoing, evolving situation here across the Kilauea volcano uh, in terms of potential eruption. Let's see what they put out here. Today's update, April 30th. Uh, by the way, it's about 3.21 p.m. California time. Back in the uh, Pacific stand, uh, Pacific time here. Kilauea Volcano is currently not erupting and the significant increase in seismicity be, uh, beneath the Upper East Rift Zone and Caldera south of the crater region that began on April 27th is continuing. Updates are being provided daily while the heightened state of unrest continues. Now, yeah, here they're mentioning uh, 360 earthquakes in the past 24 hours. Wow, wow. That's crazy. Hold on a second here. Earthquakes are occurring at depths of 1.5 to 2.5 kilometers beneath the surface. There were over 360 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, about the same number as the previous 24 hours. So that right there, right? If that's a previous number, we should be looking at 700 earthquakes up here on the map. But uh, it, see, that's what I told you. They're, they're, they're seeing a lot of earthquake activity, but they're not including it all on the map. This is the last seven days. So we should see probably close to a thousand if their numbers are um you know matching up 360 just in the last 24 and then prior to that 360 in in the previous 24 so you know that's a lot of earthquake activity uh, a minimal a minimal amount showing up here on the usgs map i'm not for sure why they're not adding all of the earthquakes here because that could be uh, you know, a good indicator of what's going on. Are we seeing a separate swarm down here? Are we seeing more activity over here? Where's all those hundreds and hundreds of other earthquakes that are not showing up on the map? Uh, but they mentioned that right there. At least, at least 360 earthquakes in the past 24 hours, right from the USGS. Uh, accelerated rates of ground deformation continue with ongoing overall inflation of the summit right what causes that inflation well that's magma below the subsurface area uplift south of the caldera 
Uh, tilt meters in the region show increased rates of inflation and uplift uh, yesterday until about 6 p.m. when rates decreased slightly with the onset of deflation, eflation, inflation event. That's just this ongoing deal. I'll show you guys uh, the deformation data. Uh, this is the past two days. Notice that inflation going on. There's that deflation. Uh, and it's just a trend. This is an ongoing trend here over the past month. And if you go back the past year or so, uh, we've seen a similar event uh, where it was a stair-stepping type of um, inflation, deflation event until right about February there. February, um, sometime right on that time frame, we've seen a huge displacement of magma from the summit that got kicked off to the southwest rift zone. Don't know what happened to it guess it's sitting down there somewhere potentially uh, either way we're getting the further inflation there across the summit region so this whole area is generally inflated much much higher than it has been uh, in recent times so currently no eruption right definitely no eruption let me uh go back here to the earthquake map and see what we got for these seismographs no eruption yet, but I guarantee you, I think this is going to happen. Uh, whoa, look at that. <laughs> Goodness, that's a lot of earthquake activity here. So, yeah, it does look like, at least according to this one, let me check this summit re uh, the summit region up here. That one's not working. This one's ooh, pretty active as well. But it looks like most of the earthquake activity is in the vicinity here of this earthquake swarm so you could probably add three or four hundred maybe more earthquakes onto this map uh, onto this map as well because it's mentioned there that uh, there's been a lot of activity so um you know it's it's something to watch here pretty closely folks whether eruptive activity takes place here across the upper east rift zone or maybe further uh, up at the summit region uh, we'll have to watch that Again, there was, you know, there was a huge displacement of magma that was uh, uh, pushed off here towards, a, kind of towards the Loihi Seamount uh, offshore back in February. We seen a trail of activity. That magma uh, got displaced from the summit off here, and you could see a line going out here. It was crazy. The earthquake activity was the key indicator of what was going on. We, we watched that going off here to the uh, area. Now we got further inflation. So this whole general area out here is looking at potentially some larger eruption and maybe even some long-term eruption once it, once it gets going. Uh, but for now, you know, it's, it's something we got to watch, right? Earthquake activity, uh, inflation, deflation event, key indicators of a uh, imminent eruption there across the Kilauea volcano. All right, what else we got here? California activity. Little small earthquake swarm here near Corona down in Southern California in the Santa Ana Mountains. It looks like that's off of the Elsinore Fault here. Not a whole lot uh, of earthquake activity recently on this fault system. It's been more so on the... Um, San Jacinto Fault Zone, secondary here to the San Andreas Fault. This one uh, relieves, or at least builds up quite a bit of stress. I don't know if it relieves it or not across the plate boundary, but uh, it uh, has been pretty active here recently. The San Andreas Fault itself in the dark red line, the plate boundary, very quiet for now. Uh, minimal movement throughout Northern California. Uh, yesterday, seen a couple earthquakes come in off of the um, Oregon coast. A 3.6 way out in the Blanco fracture zone. This is a strike slip fault um, with some spreading seafloor sensors out here. You can kind of see them, maybe a couple right here as well, and up around the um, the Gorda Ridges over here. Or Gorda Ridges down here. There's uh, the Juan de Fuca Ridge. So, uh, with that being said, it definitely looks like things have been a little bit further strained following this activity up here. Now, that's not a big earthquake, but normally when we'll see uh, movement up here on the strike slip fault zone, it does add further strain, uh, mostly downstream here where we're seeing this activity, which would include the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So that 2.6 came in um, this morning following the earthquake activity there yesterday offshore with that 3.6. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map, see what's going on here. I didn't get a chance to check it yesterday. Goodness, driving, I don't think, I don't know if I could be a truck driver. It's kind of hard. I know they're only supposed to drive 12, 12 hours, I believe. 
I had to push through, and we did it. We got about 112 epicenters of earthquakes. That is from yesterday. We haven't seen today's update put out yet. That's uh, the Cascadia subduction zone trimmer count. Not a big number, but uh, still seeing some activity. Yellowstone National Park. What's going on up here? A couple smaller quakes, it looks like. So let's go to the Yellowstone seismograph and uh, see what's going on here. There's some distant earthquake. It looks like right here. Not for sure exactly where that's at. I don't see a whole lot of localized activity. Some of the smaller spikes right here, yes. That's some very small earthquake activity, but uh, I'm trying to see where that uh, signal is from. That's showing up there in, in uh, Yellowstone. Looks like a, a distant earthquake. Maybe it's down here. Could be one of these down in Idaho. A little, little earthquake swarm outside of the Preston, Idaho area. Clifton, Idaho. A couple twos and some ones coming in last night and today so far. Uh, quite a few fault systems that run through here in southern Idaho and through the uh, Great Salt Lake City area. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely uh, seen some you know, earthquake activity out here across the West Coast. Texas area getting uh, quite a bit. I was just out here. Um, I don't know if I'm... I, Big Spring, yeah. Big Spring, Texas area. 3.4, 3.1, 2.1. couple other earthquakes out here. There's oil fields galore out here across this area. Goodness, everywhere you look within 10 feet, uh, there's oil fields and these wastewater disposal ponds and... Looks like this area is a new region that's getting hit. Most of the earthquake activity here over the past year has been hammering this area up around Tex uh, Pecos, Texas area. They've seen a lot of earthquake activity. It looks as though that migration of pressure may be moving up uh, further into the Texas area. Of course, eventually all of these oil fields out here across Texas will be hit uh, due to the constant pressure that's always out here on the North American plate. 2.3 early this morning near Tilden, Texas. Um, let's see what you guys want to take a guess what's out there. Let's zoom in, see what's out there. Look at those lines. Those are uh, interesting looking lines, but the road network it looks like. Either way, not a swimming pool. These are wastewater disposal ponds and quite a few oil and pumping operations out there in that part of Texas as well. So we look for newer regions that are getting hit. That's a good indicator here of migration of pressure across the North American uh, region. One more earthquake out in New Jersey, a little 0.9. Things kind of calming down, though, out there. Not a, not a whole lot of activity. Deep movement here across the Tonga Trench. Earthquake activity underneath New Zealand. Looks like a 4.7 coming in. Uh, let's go check out the GeoNet servers here real quick. Stand by. I got to get used to uh, using uh, this computer again. I've been on uh, my laptop for so long. It's, goodness, going to have to be retrained again on this thing. Probably not, but yeah. Uh, 4.9, that's so uh, 4.9, that's a little bit larger than what uh, the... USGS is reporting. They're reporting a 4.7. Uh, it's a, a pretty, uh, it's a moderate earthquake, 83 kilometers deep. Um, does look like it's um, off of the plate boundary, but it's a, it's a little odd area for deeper activity. There's really not uh, a subduction zone that sits down there. Just some deeper activity across this area. It looks like the subduction zone right about here. Well, maybe. Maybe that is. Uh, that's 106 kilometers deep for the USGS. The subduction zone sits right here. Further west you go on the map underneath this region is the deeper areas of the Hikarangi subduction zone there in New Zealand. So that is showing some movement here recently with all the uh, super deep earthquakes underneath the uh, North Island region here recently. So that's always of concern. 4.2 looks like prior to that. 96 kilometers deep, so just a heads up. Stay on guard out there across the New Zealand area. Uh, you know, it, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be 100 years from now, but either way, it's still quite active down there in that region. Uh, big one, obviously, capable in that area. Philippines, uh, deeper activity here across this region of the Philippine Trench, a 4.4, 120 kilometers deep there for that quake. 
Um, and some two super deep earthquake activity up there into the Izu Trench. Looks like a 4.0 right here, being reported by the USGS as well. 394 kilometers deep there for that quake. Watch areas upstream, folks. This area definitely capable of producing some large quakes. Uh, let's see what we've had over the last seven days. 4.5 and above. Um, I've been gone that entire time. I've been gone almost 10 days out on a, a journey <laughs> quite the journey i think i'm gonna fly out there next time again it's fun seeing all the uh the scenery from the ground but goodness is it draining uh kudos out there to the truck drivers because they uh they definitely have a tough job out there driving 12 hours a day crazy all right so areas that we're kind of looking at that really haven't been hit in the last seven days What's open out here? The Kuro Kamachaka areas around Papua New Guinea look a little absent of earthquake activity. Not a whole lot going on here across the Nepal area for now. Yes, there is some smaller earthquake activity uh, being listed up here. Looks like there was a four-pointer in there as well. But uh, areas to watch maybe here, uh, some of these regions around Papua New Guinea. And, of course, the Kuro Kamachaka. I've been saying that for quite a while. Uh, that thing, I, I believe, is primed for a big earthquake. It's been building up some steam for quite a while, and it just continues without any major uh, earthquake activity. No major release of uh, that built-up pressure. Uh, Mexico, I believe this is from last night. I think I've seen that come in. Yes, it was. The 5.1. 142 kilometers here into the Middle America Trench. Pretty deep earthquake there. Doesn't look like we've seen any major adjustment upstream. A handful of smaller quakes within that same region. Uh, there's a 5.1 over here across the uh, subduction zone area of the Barbados area. This is the eastern edge here of the Caribbean plate. This one's pretty shallow though. Um, but there is obviously some subduction going on here with the island creation and uh, this area has been somewhat active across Puerto Rico here recently. Seen a decent amount of earthquake swarming here. Uh, no big earthquake activity out here, but this movement uh, further to the southeast here indicate of a regional strain against the Caribbean plate. Uh, so we'll watch that. That earthquake struck this morning. So there's always possibility here of seeing some further movement. Uh, of course, you know, this region here of the Middle America Trench earthquake activity when it happens here. Uh, puts a lot of strain on this little plate. It's always getting uh, moved around and pushed around from the South America region, the North American plate. Uh, what goes on out here across the divergent zones affect the Caribbean plate. So um, there, there's been a lot of activity around it. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that region for some movement. South America, handful of smaller quakes out there very typical 5.6 down into the south sandwich trench it looks like that earthquake coming in this morning 5.6 11 kilometers deep there it's pretty deep uh, four pointer underneath the uh, area of chile 280 kilometers deep for that quake the atlantic ocean uh, aside from the movement way down south there Looks like uh, an area around the Azores seeing some decent earthquakes warming up here. Nothing being reported by the USGS, but uh, definitely shown there on the EMSC model. Let's see if anything's been affected up there in the Iceland area. This is the, uh, the Iceland map here. Oh, goodness, what is going on with this? This looks a little off here. Okay, that's Quite weird. Um, 34 earthquakes out here. Not a whole lot. Not a not a big amount out here. Um, what's that red thing out here? Maybe the most recent earthquake. It's weird. Uh, a little bit of movement here across Grindavik. Let's go see what's going on there from the uh, live from Iceland here. Still seeing uh, at least one active vent out there, pretty large one. Uh, still seeing that fountaining going on, the lava fountaining. Looks like that's the only region right there of uh, any interest 
I uh, haven't checked out this recently here in terms of any updates. Uh, this update here from the Icelandic Met Office was put out today. Uh, land rise is still, uh, man, it's going to be hard to read. Land rise is still comparable to Savart Singhi, but there are indications that it slowed down. Pressure is still building in the magma chamber, the total volume of magma underneath the Savart Singhi region. Since March 16th, is estimated at over 10 million cubic meters of magma. That's still um, quite a bit of inflation going on, recharging of the system. So no new eruption yet. I mean, obviously, we got the ongoing eruption here that I just showed you on the webcam, but uh, no new fissure activity opening up here for now. But obviously, uh, as pressure continues to increase underneath the region, the likelihood of another eruption happening within the region or uh, maybe a further increase in pressure out here across this area, further flow of magma or lava uh, is likely. All right, uh, what else we got out here, folks? Um, yeah, Kilauea Volcano, we got to watch out for sure. Solarham.com. Got to remember that. Solarham.com, not solarham.net anymore. It's been updated to the .com domain. A couple M flares from last night. See those on the chart right here uh, from the Space Weather Prediction Center. Two very low M grade flares really nothing of major concern the overall threat still looks like a 10 percent chance for an x flare m flare at 55 percent chance c flare around 99 percent chance but uh overall uh, i think the only area here to watch is going to be 3654 which harbors a beta gamma delta structure magnetic structure and that's this region right here but if you look at the most recent image here it's starting to uh drift much further out there across the western limb and we'll be left with a couple very weak sunspots. One region down here on the southeastern limb we'll have to watch. Might show a little bit of complexity. Not a whole lot of auroras in the forecast. We do have, it um, looks like maybe some slight developing auroras across the extreme higher latitudes with KP index up around the three and a half range or so. Uh, Storm Prediction Center. This is a current day one outlook out there. Got some severe, uh, some serious severe weather potential with uh, mainly wind and hail, and also of course the tor tornado reports out there. Uh, th this looks to be the pattern uh, for the remainder of this week, as a low pressure trough uh, brings in uh, some convection, and also uh, the moisture from the Gulf out here, just allowing that uh, low pressure to uh, uh, create that convection. This isn't, uh, well, these haven't loaded yet. Let's go back to the previous run, and I'll show you guys. Here's our low pressure. What a crazy, uh, crazy setup out there. These guys, you know, they just dealt with a whole bunch of tornadoes out here recently. I was out there for the event. I am thankful that I did not get caught up on any of the nighttime tornadoes. Me and Missy Mimi's were just outside of the Sulphur, Oklahoma area when those storms were coming in, and we, uh, we decided to call it quits just to the west of Sulphur because we didn't want to, uh, we couldn't see. A dark, heavy duty rain, high precipitation, supercells, and obvious rotation on the radar. So we didn't want to take that chance and just drive blind right into a tornado, which, uh, by the way, that was an EF3 that hit the Sulphur area. They had a, uh, a huge outbreak out here last week, and it does look likely with a pattern set up out here that we'll see. Uh, some more chances of the uh, tornado probability as we head deeper into May. It's going to be a West Coast uh, system out here, it looks like, this weekend. That's kind of crazy to see out here for May. That just We don't see that out here across California this late in the year. Uh, it should be about 85, 90 degrees by now. <laughs> but you know what? I will take that. Um, it's crazy. When, when I was gone out here uh, for 10 days, chasing uh, these systems uh, storms out here we had thunderstorms out here and over my house it never fails it happened last time i came out here and it's just it's crazy how that works but it looks like we'll see a decent system here come this weekend may 4th time frame uh we may see some thunderstorms out here again but uh, we'll keep you guys updated on the severe weather potential as things evolve you know, the best thing to do is make sure you guys have some type of storm shelter and uh, whatnot. You know, just do the best you can. It's hard. It's definitely hard out there. There's a lot of mobile homes out there. I, I've driven all over this area, and it, it definitely breaks my heart to hear about the damage um, 
and the uh, the incidents that took place out there for families and and property, and it's just it's not good. But what can we do? I mean, we can't build a dome over this area to prevent the severe weather. It's best to just make sure you guys always have your weather radio handy 24-7. If you're in an area that uh, may be seeing a tornado watch or a tornado warning, um, you know, get somewhere safe immediately. All right, a uh, little bit of movement up here off the Canada coast as well. Just noticed that. Some decent earthquake activity, some twos. Uh, it's off the coast of Alaska here, but on the northern edge of the North American and Pacific plate boundary. Overall, folks, um, you know, this definitely keep an eye on Kilauea Volcano. I think it's going to be soon here. Uh, earthquake activity indicative there of some magma going on there below the surface, and they're talking 360 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, so... Uh, you know, we're probably close to a thousand earthquakes, I'm guessing, within the last week with their numbers that they were throwing out. Uh, let's see, a little earthquake there in Chile. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's about it. It's, it feels good to be home. Um, I think I'm just going to fly out there next time again uh, if I want to uh, do some studying of uh, geology and whatnot. We've seen a lot of cool stuff out in Utah. And Western Colorado, goodness, they have some awesome uh, mountain ranges and uh, just a lot of older faults that you can see were out there across this area. And uh, I wish I had more time, but I had to get back here. I still got some stuff going on here for the uh, spring semester classes. So I had to get back, but it was fun. Got to meet a, a lot of cool people out there and a lot of nice, friendly people out in the area. Uh, where I was at, out in Oklahoma and Texas. I was even up here in Kansas. Uh, beautiful area. Kind of laid back, a little bit slower pace. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Live stream is up and running. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight unless something major happens. Take care and enjoy your... For some reason, I'm wanting to think it's Monday, but it's not. It's Tuesday. Literally, I, I drove all night and morning. I was crazy. All right, guys, take care.